<laughs> going to happen. <laughs> what are you talking about? He's a writer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what comes with the territory? <laughs> yeah. 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 No, but Tom did great scripts. And I, we oh, would, yeah. would have loved to get him on more, but he only had time for... But even when he did, One Million Emotions, Galaxy Stranger. Oh, great stuff. Um, great stuff. Yeah. One Million Emotions, that was a great one. Yeah, it's really probably our best script. Uh, yeah. Jimmy Lucino. Yes, Jimmy. Terrific uh, writer. Right. Um, and of course, right. we talked about Brian. Brian brought in all the Super Trooper stuff, all the great X-Men influence. Right. Well, yeah, and, and, and Brian's own uh, military influence is there, too. You know, I mean, he... You know, he was our direct link to... Uh, this was this whole thing with the Psycho Army Crystal. Service. This is this pretty complicated stuff. You know, yeah, you, you, had a, you had a, a villain. I designed the villain. I really originally wrote the pilot. And the, when I did the pilot episode in script form, it was still more of a cops in space concept. Mm -hmm. It wasn't really a full-blown, you know, pale rider in space or Sergio, Sergio Leone meets Star Wars, which is what it evolved into eventually. It was still sort of, you know... And so the Queen of the Crown was a great villain, but wasn't quite the Western no, well, take it's, that the show, the show eventually became. It's almost got sort of classic kind of 30s movie reel kind of intensity to it. I mean, what we're talking about here is sort of a, this is genocide. I mean, you know, she's disposing of this entire race of gherkins, right? I mean, yeah, in, and they're in quite a pickle. Right, <laughs> yes. I mean, I think in the uh, Tortuna episode where we introduced the incredible pedulant that Henry did, um, we see the last, last of their race, don't we? The, the final gherkin. Yeah. These, uh... But it was still, you know, she, she was taking the, the, um, essence of humans and putting them into the psycho crystals mm -hmm. and using that to energy to charge this fleet of ghostly images mm. that she would use so she could spy on the rest of the world or the rest of the universe because her empire was sort of crumbling and she couldn't have the resources to go and cover all this wide amount of space. You don't see that kind of thing on Thundercats. <laughs> no. Well, you don't have, uh, you know, 400 planets or whatever that we had. <laughs> no, I mean, also, I mean, I think Chris really designed the whole political structure here. That That's pretty complicated. Sure. Definitely. You had organizations within organizations. You had the Bureau of Extraterrestrial Affairs working for the League of Planets. Uh, you know, the Bureau of Extraterrestrial Affairs working for the Board of Leaders mm -hmm. of Earth. And the Board of Leaders was part of the League of Planets. Right. So it was pretty well defined in terms of how this universe was working. Right, and then you had just outside of the, that sort of sphere, you, well, you know, the Andorians are part of the um, the League of Planets, and so were the Kiwis, right? And they were sort of advanced in various areas. and uh, Except uh, uh, warfare. Yes, although the Andorians cl were clearly one of those, you know, races with, you know, latent warfare capabilities. If they right, could, they, sort but of... they still needed humans to come in and really handle all the dirty work. Right, right. Well, that's where, you know, Magnificent Seven, Seven Samurai really was the backbone of this whole storyline. Yeah, yeah. Instead of, uh, you know, peasants coming in for help from uh, gunslingers, you had kiwi. helpless, yeah, Ki help, helpless, helpless kiwi, kiwi vegetable farmers, yes. People with big guns. Mm -hmm. Speaking of big guns, this is the kind of action we're all waiting for. Um, yeah, no, this episode has some great action. Yeah, and it's... It really was put together pretty well. Free those people from that. <laughs> well, this whole uh, Zachary Fox and his... Uh, his poor wife uh, storyline, did that, that... What happened with that? It started out as sort of a character-driven... <laughs> impetus for Zachary, and then she sort of faded into the well because all the other characters started becoming so good. You know, well, everybody that came in, we were under such time pressure that that it was impossible really to get the discipline and you know keep it mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. revolving on this all the time. But also the other thing was, uh, you know, she was like stuck. Right. She was there, you know, in the psycho crypt, and. Um, Unless we were to kind of repeat this over and over, what were we going to do? You know, that was, that was the problem we had with this storyline here. Well, yeah, it also gave Zachary Fox a good, you know, emotional crutch to yeah. lean on over the show. It's a, right. Uh, right, uh, yeah. But the truth of the matter is, once um, Shane Gooseman came into the storylines, everything sort of shifted over to him. He was 
Well, you had that. You had his relations with Nico for some kind of thing. And right. then Nico also got storylines. That, yeah, that she got a lot of stories. She became a terrific character. And Doc mm-hmm. was a, in his own right. We, we never got a chance to do Doc's backstory, but... Yeah, no, no, it's but true. that was always on the planning stages. You know, a computer psychiatrist. What a great concept. Right. Well, yeah. And, you know, the, the whole visualization of little computer programs and everything. That was all very cute stuff. I... Ah, yes. Here's the big fleet of the Queen. We're outnumbered. We'll never make it. This is it. They'll finish us off. That's optimism. <laughs> That's Andorian view of... Uh... <laughs> oh, saved by an unexpected interloper. Right. Did anybody ever decide what that thing was that Kid had on his shoulder? What, the squeegee? Yeah, the squeegee, yeah. I don't know. It was a fur ball. Just the fur ball, okay. So this was episode number two in the series, and we only, I think, designed about 300 characters in this one. Something like that. <laughs> I mean, but we did... It was so funny, because TMS was going, oh, okay, <laughs> new characters, okay. They thought it was completely normal. <laughs> There was a cast of thousands in this. Because every time, you know, but we got a great... She, th- it, now, she's in stasis now. And poor Zozo's crying. Yes. But isn't that revisited, though, it, in a later episode? This, I remember her being brought back into the story at some point. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we made a big effort to... Because to, it was sort of, we realized, my God, we haven't... You know, that's... She's been left in the deep freeze, and... Let's do something, yeah. And now, look, there you got... You had two characters, two CGI characters and one screen. All right, well, this brings us to the conclusion of, of episode two, New right. Frontier. Spectacular. Spectacular. And, and, and that, I love the way that music kind of beats in. It's got a nice, real, you know, up to it. It just. This is, again, the main title theme. Um, somewhere along episode 20 or 40, we acquired a publishing catalog of music songs and we started sprinkling in a lot more actual songs into the series. Mm hmm. Um, but we'll get to that a little later. Uh, Helen McCartney. Where is she now these days? Uh, she's still working. Huh? And Peter Fernandez. I mean, you know, the <coughs> voice of Speed Racer. We all know what's happening with that uh, property. Corrine Orr. Corrine Orr was terrific as the queen. She was fantastic as our, uh, part of our troop. Cy has got a career out in Hollywood too, right? He's, he's, been, he's made some movies, hasn't he? Yep. Yeah. So thanks for uh, listening to us. Hope you're enjoying uh, watching the episodes as much as we are. Yeah, it's fun to see these. Once again, and all this background work. Look at this. Looks like this could be you know Lhasa in Tibet. There, you know. I mean, it's. And we'll see all you guys on uh, the next episode. See you next time. Yeah.